This has been a postseason filled with unpredictable moments, upsets, and teams that look like, well, quite frankly, we can't believe how far they've gone. There's only been one constant, and that is the Houston Astros. The best team in the American League this season is playing like it. We have Eric Heisman of Locked On Astros. He's going to survey the damage. This is Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and hello, live streamers, and hello, podcast listeners, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. This is the daily podcast we talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Check out my lower third there. You can call me Sully. I am an Emmy-nominated television producer, and I am a podcaster for a decade, more than a decade, and I've been part of the Locked On Podcast Network for the last four seasons. This is my fourth postseason that I've covered for this network. You can follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. If you can tell by my lower third there, you can follow me at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Well, the Astros, it was a tight game. It was actually a pretty exciting and well played game, but the Astros did what they've done all postseason long, and that is Hang on to win. And I wanted to bring on, at least for one segment, I know he's he's doing about 68 things at once, spinning tons of plates for the Locked On Astros show, and really the first of, our, or one of the first of the Locked On group who has really done some really great stuff on YouTube. You and H-Town have been doing great stuff there. It's Eric Heisman for Locked On Astros. Thanks for jumping on board, man. Uh, no problem. Uh, excuse my voice. I'm just getting over a flu, but I'm excited to see what the Astros have been doing. And Yankees fans have been asking for Houston. Well, you got Houston. Now you're down to nothing going back to New York. And I know that that can uh, easily turn the tide. They can easily win the three games like they did in 2017, but it's good to have that two nothing lead in the ALCS. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And especially cause you know, look at, uh, they don't, for reasons I don't understand, they don't give out a division series most valuable player. I think they right. should. And clearly the division series most valuable player for New York in the series against Cleveland was Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole pitched two very good games. He looks like the the player that the Yankees signed uh, after the 2019 World Series. And so, I mean, it was critical for New York to get one of these two games and then hand the ball to Cole where they would do that they would have a good shot, at least, at getting a 2-1 series lead. Now they're handing the ball to Cole, um, hoping to stay alive. Uh, as a native New Englander, I remember in 99 when Pedro Martinez was basically pitching like he was from Krypton. The Red Sox had those two first games in the LCS in Yankee Stadium. There was a sense if they won one of those two games and hand the ball to Pedro, they could win this series. And they lost one on a walk-off home run, and they lost one where two balls ricocheted off the top of the wall that would have been game-tying home runs, and neither time that run came home to score. Um, this was huge for the Houston Astros. Um, let's talk a little bit about the fact that uh, the the Astros pitchers seem to be throwing strikeouts at will. Right. And the first game, it was 17. In this game, it was, uh, what, 13 strikeouts. And yeah. uh, that's a total of th- 30 strikeouts and about a little more than 60, about 65 at-bats. So that's about 50%, a little bit under 50% of the times the Yankees come up to the plate, they're striking out. And uh, that's been a big advantage of the Houston Astros. I know the Yankees have struggled with strikeouts this year, but we've also seen uh, Judge, what Judge can do. And if that was any other uh, ballpark, no, I, I take that back. If that was Yankee Stadium, that ball would probably have been a home run. But Kyle Tucker kept us cool. Astros fans' hearts were beating really fast during that moment. But it was a great uh, – it 
there was a lot of great defensive plays on both sides in that game. And you had that double play where Sanchez, uh, Sanchez was falling down. Then he somehow had presence of mind to throw to get the double play. But uh, there's then you had that deflection by Bregman to Pena to get the out in, in a big situation. But uh, Framber Valdez recovered. Like this is difference between the 2019 version and the 2022 version. He is he's a little bit more in control of of his emotions. And in the past, that probably would have cratered him. He would have given up a whole bunch of runs, but he was able to focus and get in control. But this is two straight games where he's made a costly error like that. Yeah, but yeah, he but like you said, I mean, yes, they two hundred runs came in, but every other inning he was right. absolutely lights out. Uh, and you know, there's a their command of the of the series right now. And look at, I mean, obviously we've seen teams come back from two O holes. We've right. seen teams that come back from two O holes where they lost the first two games, you know, at, at home. But you know, and we've seen that this Yankee team, every time people try to count them out, they dust themselves off. And they lost back-to-back gut punch games to Cleveland and managed to win games four and games five. Now, the Astros are currently playing a perfect postseason. They right. swept so they swept Seattle. And they swept. New, they've taken the first two games against New York. Here's the thing that must be interesting for you: there hasn't been a snoozer in any of those games. You had the walk-off home run in Game One against Seattle, which obviously they were one pitch away from losing that game. Right. You had the the four-two game against Seattle in Game Two, which was you know, I mean, it, it wasn't a one-run game, but it was pretty tight. And then, of course, you had the 18-inning marathon. What is it with the Astros at these long playoff games? And then last night was pretty tight game until the end, and this game was a one-run game. So the, the Astros have been walking a tightrope, but they're still sitting with a perfect postseason record at this point. And it all comes down to pitching. I mean, Christian Navier, and uh, I want to say, I forgot who gave up the home run yesterday, but um, it was uh, – They've, they're the only ones in the bullpen that's really been touched up by any team. The bullpen has been the strength for the Houston Astros all year. Then you have the starting rotation. Yes, the Mariners got to Justin Verlander in the first game of the ALDS, but he figured things out after a slow start. But uh, he's a veteran, and he's able to figure things out mid-game. And he finished with 11 strikeouts. Now he's in the top uh, of the strikeouts in postseason history with 219. So, yeah, the Astros are winning not because of their offense. Their offense is very timely, but they're winning because of their pitching. And the pitching uh, we're seeing is going to maybe carry them through. I don't know if they're going to keep that perfect record throughout New York. New York is a very hard place to play. I know that Garrett Cole versus – they haven't named a Game 3 starter. I'm sure it's going to be Lance McCullers. But um, that's going to be an interesting matchup because they are friends and they are they, – there are a lot of um, – if you look at the postseason ERA, uh, McCullers actually has a better ERA in his career than Cole does. Right. Well, look at – if it, every game they've been playing has been airtight. Every game they're playing is one of those games that if you put down a single dollar to bet on them – you would be like, you know, clutching your clutching your hands right until the end. So, oh my God, are we going to win this? And if you're going to be making bets, go to Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all your football betting. Bet Online is where you can find the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth analysis at every game. And as always, Bet Online remains continued source for all sports wagering information with live betting, up-to-minute scores, and for every sport out there. The fastest and easy way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball playoffs, MMA, boxing, and golf, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online. It's where the game starts. All right, Eric, I promise I'm not going to keep you long here. I do want to get – we're with Eric Heisman of uh, Locked On Astros here. You're about to do about 12 different podcasts right now, so I do want to just jump on and ask you a couple of quick things because obviously – the the pitching has been the the only hiccup the the Astros have had pitching wise this whole postseason has been Verlander did not look very good in Game One against Seattle but he righted the ship in Game One against 
the Yankees. I had your your co-host, H-Town Wheelhouse, was on here a couple of times, and I said the main thing that will probably propel the Astros to the World Series is their ridiculous pitching depth. Um, and when you consider the fact that Altuve is in a horrible slump right now, and um, uh, Alvarez has been a non-factor in the ALCS, the fact that they're they're up 2-0 is completely uh, uh, a factor of their pitching. And who is going to be there? Are they going to go? Who's going to be their number four? Are they going to go Garcia? Are they going to try to give? Are they going to use Hunter Brown as a long term weapon? Are they going to hand uh, it to Javier Odorizzi? What, what are they doing later in the, the rotation? I think the fourth starter is Christian Javier. Uh, in today's game, Urquidy and Luis Garcia went to the bullpen. Javier mm-hmm. stayed in dugout. So that's a pretty good indication of he's going to be starting game four. He has been the Astros' best strikeout pitcher and this year. So if you're facing a team like the Yankees that do hit a lot of home runs, but they also strike out a lot, uh, you want your best strikeout hitter. And he's actually dominated the Yankees in the past. I know the past is the past, but also Valdez has struggled against the Yankees in the past, and we saw what he did today. So the postseason is a different animal. Yeah, we'll just ask the Dodgers that regarding San Diego. Um, yeah, Luis Garcia uh, was an unbelievable weapon in that 18 inning marathon. Four, he pitched five shutout innings to clinch it, but four of those innings, every time the ball left his fingers, the winning run was at the plate, you know, it was with a zero zero right. game. And I think the fact that they have um, a pitcher like Luis Garcia, who's obviously a very talented pitcher mm-hmm. on many teams, you'd be the number two starter. And I mean, I'm talking many playoff teams and Hunter Brown is another weapon out of the bullpen. I mean, if they get like an Urquidy or a Javier um, or, or McCullers, I guess you said McCullers and, and um, right. Who's going? Who did you say was the fourth? Was it or keeper? Javier? No, uh, Javier. Javier. Okay, I'm sorry. Get, uh, you have so many pitchers on that team. I, I, I got a little confused. Who's one? If any one of them falter, you can go to Brown. You can go to Garcia. You can go to Urquidy. I mean, what other team can do that right now? I mean, it's just it's it's insane the depth that they have and the fact that they're they're masking the fact that two of their most reliable offensive players aren't you know first I know it's only two games but you know they obviously didn't drive in any runs in game three either you know because only right. it was only the Jeremy Pena home run yeah before Alvarez had his hit today uh, he was 0 for 12 since that uh, the the home run in game two of the ALDS. So he struggled a little bit. You have Tucker. He did get a hit today. So the offense is starting to come around a little bit, but uh, you can't keep on playing these cat and mouse games with the uh, Yankees. They're going to eventually, especially at Yankee stadium, they're going to, they're, the bats are going to come out. So uh, McCullers and then Javier, then Verlander, they've got to come out and bring their a game pitching. And yes, Hunter Brown is a great asset to the Houston Astros. Well, and and I'm sorry. There was a there was a glitch happened there. I don't know if you heard that or not. Um, but but uh, if you didn't hear it, great. <laughs> if you did, did you hear it or no? Um, okay, good. Then it just was on my end. Sorry, everyone in the live stream. There was a there was. It sounded like uh, something burdening there. But uh, the fact that you're getting Bregman contributing as well. He got a home run in the division series. Obviously, his three run home run today was the difference. Um, Obviously, you want to see. I mean, you're an Astros fan. Uh, I'm gathering, and uh, obviously, you would want to see a sweep. Uh, but does this the fact that they won these two games even without any contributions from Altuve or any real contribution from um, Alvarez? Does that give you any sort of sense of relaxation of like, okay, we can afford to take one in the chin? Uh, yeah, I think that the, that should scare the Yankees. The fact that the Astros are doing this without Altuve. Altuve was the ALCS uh, MVP, I believe, in 2019, and he's he's just dominated the Yankees in his career. So his time has come, and I thought it was. I think I said earlier Sanchez, but it was Torres that made that great play to rob him of the hit, and that look that had the making of a hit. 
And that's the type of slump up buster that somebody like Altuve needs. But I think his time will come. Maybe he'll come in New York with all the booze. Cause you know, uh, once he comes up to the bat, it's going to be F Altuve and all that stuff. So he, well, you got to expect that. that you got to expect that. And, and you know what? I have to say, I I underestimated the Astros this year uh, because I thought the loss of Correa was going to be a much have a much larger impact on the team, and I felt that in the past couple of years, especially last year, it was Correa that understood and kind of embraced the fact that you know the Astros are going to be the villains, whether or not you you whether or not you Houston fans like that for the rest of the country they're going to be the villains. And Correa was basically like, okay, fine. That's our role. We're like the Raiders of the 70s or whatever, or the bad boy Pistons of hey. the 80s. Yeah, you know, I was like, fine. If that's our role, that's our role. Then let's have fun with it. And um, I think it's now in an odd way up to Altuve to be like, okay, you're going to be the one. You have to embrace that because you know he's going to hear it in New York. You know, there's no getting around. There's not gonna, it's going to be brutal there. And he's going to get the bulk of it. You know, whether or not, you know, for all the, you know, for all the reasons that we already know, it's not worth going into it all, but you know, for all the reasons we already know, um, I will say to anyone, and this is coming from me and you know, that Astros Twitter oftentimes hates my guts, uh, and you and uh, me and your, your, uh, your partner H town have occasionally locked antlers on some of these topics here. Uh, anyone who's Astro hating, go ahead, please. Baseball is better when you have villains. But you know this team has had every eyeball staring at everything that they do. So there, this is for this year. I think we could safe to say there's no shenanigans going on, and um, you know this is this is just going to be two very good teams that you know hopefully bait for baseball fans are going to give us a couple more terrific games. Uh, yeah, I've actually got to take off, uh, but to kind of lead into your next segment. Uh, yeah. The Padres are the team that uh, I'm a little scared of. The not necessarily for er- everybody else, but remember Juan Soto when he was only 22, he was a World Series MVP against the Houston Astros. He batted 3.33 with a 741 slugging percentage, had three home runs and seven RBIs in a World Series against the Houston Astros. To be fair, Strasburg won the MVP. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah, he did. But but it very well. It could have been Soto. It was. It, okay. it was. It could have been. But hey, everyone. Hey, uh, Eric Heisman. Thanks so much for being part of the show and jumping on. And uh, I guess one of my listeners says, uh, Albert Margolin says, Eric the man Heisman. So you at least one of my listeners is a fan of yours here. So uh, thanks for jumping on board, Eric, and have a great show. Whatever the fifty other shows you're doing right now. All righty. Thank you, Sully. Bye. All right, we finished talking with uh, Eric Heisman of Locked On Astros. I had him on a little bit longer than I promised, but yeah, we did a couple of segments with them. Um, yeah, the the Padres and the Phillies are ta- are starting on the twenty first, and this will be Game Three. They're going to be heading to Citizens Bank Ballpark, a ballpark that I actually went to a game to this year. And um, when I was in Philadelphia this August, I went to see a game, and the the Phillies were just starting to right the ship then. I thought, oh, isn't this sweet? The Phillies might get one of the wild card spots, but clearly they're not in the same league as the Dodgers, the Mets, and Atlanta. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Look at whichever one of these two teams makes it in, um, they've earned it. I mean, if the Padres make it to the World Series, they would have beaten two 100 win teams in order to get in. And Philadelphia would have had to have beaten a very good Cardinals team and a defending World Series champion in Atlanta. Um, Ranger Suarez is going to get the start for Philadelphia. Um, not sure what to make of Ranger Suarez as a starter. Um, you know, he's you know obviously he's a talented pitcher, and the Phillies are gonna are gonna you know, trust him with this very important assignment but they've already gone the big weapons that they have uh Suarez you know had a had a decent season this year but it was Nola and Wheeler who are their big weapons out of the rotation you know Suarez did pitch in the uh uh division series against Atlanta he started game two and 
he uh, lasted only three and a third innings. He didn't pitch particularly badly, but it didn't look like, you know, he let up five walks in three and a third innings. So um, that's really not that great, to be sure. Um, And Musgrove is going to be pitching for the San Diego Padres. And not only is Musgrove the person with every single Padres no-hitter in their history, and uh, Musgrove pitched very well in his 30 starts and 181 innings that he threw for the uh, threw for the Padres over the season. But he got in the clinching game, of course, against the Mets, do or die game. He pitched seven shutout innings where he let up one hit, and then pitched the game against Los Angeles where he only let up two runs in six innings. Right now, it looks like the pitching advantage is heading towards San Diego. Now, I, as I've said before, I don't. I, I like it, the Phillies and I like the Padres, and so you know, I I just want it to go seven games. But this one clearly feels like it's in the favor of the San Diego Padres. But then again, didn't Max Scherzer starting look like it was in favor of the Mets? Nothing makes sense in the National League. In a way, everything seems to be making sense in the American League as we've got the two best teams in the American League in the American League Championship Series. So that's that feels a little more like, okay, we can see and line these up. Nothing makes sense anymore. Nothing. So we're going to see um, I just wanted to go back and forth. I know if you're a Phillies fan, you want to run off with it. If you're Javi Reyes and any Padres fans, you want to run off with it. Part of me would like to see Dusty Baker versus Bob Melvin, two managers with multiple world, uh, multiple. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Manager of the Year awards, looking to win their first World Series as a manager. That would be a tremendous amount of drama, but we're going to see. Uh, anyone? Uh, let's go to the chat here as we're in the live stream. Hey, uh, uh, David Samuel Blaine is back in here again. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, I mentioned Albert Margoin, Mar- Marquin. I, I, uh, Nick W. is there. Good to see some of the people going on there. Uh, David Samuel Blaine, who is quickly turning into one of my really most reliable. Oh, let me get rid of my lower third. It's getting a little too cluttered here. Um New York Yankees shouldn't underestimate the Houston Astros. David, I don't think they're underestimating anything. I honestly don't. I think that the Yankees have played quite well, thank you very much. I think the, you know, uh, Severino pitched well. I think they did a decent job. It's just the Astros pitching has been unbelievably great. And we have seen that the Yankees offense can be stymied. We've seen in the course of this season that you could have a poor offensive showing from the squad. And, you know, so far, that's what you have. Um, so, look it. We're going to see the, 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 basically the entire American League Championship Series is resting on game three with Garrett Cole in an afternoon game in New York. And, if the Yankees can win that, then they have a chance. The Then on Sunday evening, if they can try to tie the game, if they wind up winning that game. But it all it's all on Garrett Cole right now. It was all on Garrett Cole in game four of the series against Cleveland. It's now all, it's not obviously not an elimination game, but they don't want to fall down 3-0. Now, yes, yes, a team can come back from 3-0. I can't remember which one it was. I have to look it up. But they don't want to see that happen. And for Philadelphia and and San Diego, well, we're just going to have to see. I mean, if Philadelphia can win the Joe Musgrove start and maintain home field advantage, then this is going to be an absolutely wild and totally unpredictable National League Championship Series. But so far, it's been a lot of fun. So far, it's been fun. So, hey, thanks for jumping into the chat. Thanks for Eric Heisman for being part of the show. And you can follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter and on Instagram. And I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Jumping on board and talking about the second game of the ALCS and getting a nice cameo from Eric Heisman of Locked On Astros. This has been Locked On MLB and the, the live stream on the 10th of October, 2022. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sully.